President Joe Biden is ready to sign a $1 trillion infrastructure bill into law. Illinois is set to receive at least $17 billion from it, about half. will go to repairing water service lines, bringing broadband internet to rural areas, and improving airports. But more than $10 billion is slated for federal highway projects and bridge replacements. Amanda Venicky joins us now with a push to pave a particular road project, an expressway that is the cause of many a traffic headache. Amanda. Yeah, Brandis, if you've driven in and around Chicago, chances are that you have been stuck in a traffic jam and that you have been stuck along one of Chicago's original interstates, a 13-mile stretch of expressway completed in 1960. The Eisenhower, named after the president who conceived of the interstate system. It's also known as the Ike 290 or whatever TV inappropriate name you may call it under your breath if you're stuck on it during rush hour. So 290, a major, major transportation corridor in the Chicago region. It is the direct connection into the city from the western suburbs. So it's directly east-west going into the loop. Um, it's providing, you know, that important connection for those commuters coming from the, the western part of Chicago. It's providing connection for uh, residents living along 290 in southern Cook County, particularly to get to job centers along I-88 or O'Hare. As transportation director of the nonpartisan Illinois Economic Policy Institute, Mary Tyler just authored a study examining the Eisenhower. Among her findings, I-290 averaged two fatal crashes a year, a higher crash rate than comparable roadways. Its design is outdated, with 86% of bridges deemed functionally obsolete. Intersections are tough for pedestrians to navigate and to reach stations for the CTA Blue Line, which runs parallel to the Ike. And while that top pavement has been resurfaced, much of the underlying pavement or sub-base is original, as in from the 50s. Not to mention all that congestion, which is why she says Illinois should make rebuilding the Ike a top priority. She's not alone in wanting that. Here's a clip from last night when Paris Act asked Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy about it. I hope so. The 290 goes through my district. Also, the Elgin O'Hare Expressway, which neither reaches Elgin nor O'Hare, Paris. I would put that somewhere on the top 10 if we can get to that. Krishnamurthy's answer hints at how efforts to redo 290 may, however, hit a traffic jam itself. He's got an eye on a couple of projects. As you just heard, politicians from throughout Illinois will be clamoring for funding to go to their areas. Illinois is poised to capitalize on this federal infrastructure bill. The state raised the gas tax as part of the bipartisan Rebuild Illinois program in 2019. So has money available to pay for the required matching funds? Even so. The needs are massive across the state and Rebuild Illinois did a really great job of trying to address some of that. But unfortunately, the need is so large that it still can't even can't even scratch the surface and be able to address a lot of these major projects. And so that's what you know, it's just there's just not enough funding to go around is really the, the answer, unfortunately. And completing that 290 project would eat up several billion dollars. Northwestern University transportation expert Joseph Schofer is troubled by the notion that whenever there's congestion, the go-to response is increasing road capacity. I think it's all too easy to say, gee, we've got a lot of congestion, got to fix that um, with, without stepping back and saying, might there be diff some different solutions, a different mix, not necessarily to walk away from that project, but maybe to adapt that project, for example, to address the impact that the co original construction of the Eisenhower Expressway had on communities on, on the west side of Chicago. And is this an opportunity not just to, uh, if you will, add capacity or, or, or renew the infrastructure, but to renew the communities them, themselves? He also says that leaders could consider options like metering demand with something like congestion pricing. Now, the project that is packed by labor, the Chicago Chamber of Commerce, some big politicians and other groups would take a similar approach to what he suggested. One of the big bottlenecks on 290 is when it goes from four down to three lanes. And the particular plan that Tyler's study focused on would add a fourth lane going in each direction and eventually 
those lanes would charge a toll to any vehicle with fewer than three passengers. Now, the plan also calls for a new pedestrian and bike paths, also crosswalks to Blue Line stations. We're not talking about just, you know, paving a road and improving some bridges. We're also talking about that managed lane, which is going to be the first in the Chicago region, which is going to allow for transit access, better transit access. It's going to promote carpooling. We're improving uh, pedestrian facilities. We're improving access to transit stations. Like it's truly a project that is improving all modes of transportation. The concept of rebuilding the Ike has clout, given who's in the well, driver's seat of the state legislature. State Senate President Donna Harmon is from Oak Park. State House Speaker Chris Welch is from Westchester, meaning they, their districts and constituents live right along 290. They have publicly called for Illinois to get behind this rebuild project. But Governor J.B. Pritzker's Illinois Department of Transportation confirms that rebuilding 290 is not on the state's highway improvement plan through the year 2027. Meanwhile, the CTA saying there are no official studies or plans to extend the Forest Park branch of the Blue Line. Brandis, back to you. Amanda, thank you.